Hi, my name is Jess and I live for musical theater. Um, I go to performing arts high school in Las Vegas and I'm a theater major and a musical theater major. I'm actually graduating soon, but different story. Um, and I do this thing where somebody will ask about the plot of a musical and I'll get so excited that I try to tell it to them as fast as possible so I don't lose our interest. And I've been told that it's semi-entertaining, so I thought I'd try to make it into like a YouTube thing. So the first show I decided on was Sweeney Todd, because I love Stephen Sondheim. And usually I'd be able to make these pretty fast, but Sweeney Todd's a really, really long show, and also kind of complicated. So I'm going to do my best. I'm going to try to do it in 15 minutes. If not, um, feel free to roast me. I, I'll do better next time, but um, here we go. I'm starting my timer now. So, Antony, a young strapping boy, and Sweeney Todd, a bitter old man, arrive in the harbor of London. Antony loves traveling the world. He's like, I love the world. There's no place like London. It's so great. And Sweeney Todd's like, I hate everything about London and everything. And this beggar woman comes by. She's like, oh my god, can I get some spare change, please? And Antony gives her some. And Sweeney Todd's like, gone with you. Be away. Be away. An important note is beggar woman's like, I feel like I know you. Whatever. Uh, Antony says to Sweeney, he's like, where can I find you if I ever need you? And Sweeney Todd says, you can find me on Fleet Street. So Ant so Antony's like, great. Uh, Sweeney walks over to Fleet Street. He's like, and he finds, he finds this establishment. It's a pie shop on the bottom and a barber shop on top. He walks into the pie shop. He's like, hello. And out pops Miss Lovett, our eccentric old lady, who's like, hello, I haven't had a customer in weeks and I make the worst pies in London. How can I help you? Sweeney says, is there anybody uh, renting out that room upstairs? Can you tell me a little bit about that? And Miss Lovett says, oh yeah, there used to be this wonderful barber. Uh, his name was Benjamin Barker. He used to work up there. Uh, he had this beautiful wife, Lucy, and this little beautiful baby named Joanna, and he lived the perfect life. But then this horrible man, Judge Turpin, came along and was so jealous of Sweeney Todd and his perfect life. So he made up fake charges and got uh, Benjamin Barker exiled to Australia. Benjamin Barker is Sweeney Todd, just so you know. I think I said Sweeney Todd in that sequence. I can't remember. Still going on. Um, and after Benjamin Barker was exiled, Lucy was all alone, and Judge Turpin's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry your husband is gone. Um, hey, how about you come to my house party? So she's like, okay, I'll go to your house party. And she goes, and it's actually a masquerade ball, so she doesn't know anybody there, and she's totally scared and overwhelmed. And then she finds Judge Turpin, who ends up raping her, <laughs> and kicking her to the curb. And Lucy is so overcome with, like, guilt and sadness that she drinks poison. That's as far as Joanna, not, that's as far as Miss Lovett goes with the story. So she doesn't say whether she died or not or anything. And then she says that Judge Turpin decided to take Joanna under his arm and adopt her. And Sweeney Todd is overwhelmed with emotion. He's like, why would nobody have mercy on her? And Miss Lovett's like, I knew it. I knew you were Benjamin Barker. And he's like, tch, 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 tch. Sweeney Todd now. What's up? Um, so can I use that barbershop upstairs? She's like, yeah, actually, I have your old razors right here. Pure, silver, beautiful. I was going to sell them, but I didn't. Um, so you can have them if you want. He's like, at last my arm is complete again. And he decides that he will get revenge on Judge Turpin and Judge Turpin's sidekick, Beetle Bamford. Meanwhile, um, Antony is walking down the street and he sees this beautiful blonde lady in a building singing a song behind a window and he's like, wow, she is so gorgeous. I love her. I, I love her. Who is that? To the beggar woman who's coincidentally there. She's like, that's Joanna. And he's like, wow, I'm going to take her away. I'm going to, I love her. She's mine. And Judge Trevor comes out. He's like, I don't think so. If I see you here again, I'm going to fight you. So Antony runs all the way back to um, Sweeney's, he's like, I just found the most beautiful girl and I need your help saving her. And Sweeney's like, okay, sure, whatever. And he's like, yeah, her name is Joanna. And Sweeney's like, okay, yeah, yeah, you can, 
yes, I will be whatever you need. I, I'm there for it. I'm there. I got, I got you. Next scene. Um, set in a like, town square kind of thing. And Mr. Pirelli, this Italian gentleman, and his little sidekick, Toby, they're trying to sell this elixir that Mr. Pirelli has made, which claims to promote hair growth. And the town is eating it up. They're like, this is great. I love this. This is such a good idea. And Sweeney Todd comes along. He's like, this is piss and ink. This is piss and ink. It's not, it's not going to do anything. And Miss Pirelli's like, how dare you insult my art? How about we fight? I challenge you to a duel. But not like a fighting duel, like a shaving duel. And Beetle Bamford's like, all right, ladies, all right. I will mandate this fight. You don't have to ask me. I'll do it. I'll do it. Whoever gives the fastest, smoothest shave wins the bet. And so <laughs> Mr. Pirelli sings this beyond show-off song. It's like higher than tenor, like, ah! And he sings this whole song. And by the time he finishes the song, Sweeney Todd is already done. He's like, <laughs> done. So Mr. Pirelli has to pay Sweeney Todd. He's like, mm, bitter. But Beatles like, you know, you're pretty good at that, Sweeney Todd. Maybe I'll come by your barber shop sometime. And Sweeney's like, yes, that's good. I'll give you a free shave. Free shave just for you, my man. And Beatles like, great. I'll see you there. <laughs> so this whole time, uh, Judge Turpin's kind of a kind of a creepy guy a little bit. Uh, he decides, well, for the past few years, he's kind of like, really fallen in love with Joanna, which is weird. Very weird. And he's decided at this point, he's like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna marry her. I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna marry, I'm gonna marry Joanna. And he proposes to Joanna, and Joanna's like, oh god, no, 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 please god, no. And that, that has happened, I forgot to mention that, but blah, blah. Uh, Sweeney Todd is waiting in his barbershop. He's like, where's Beetle? Beetle said he was gonna be here. I'm pissed about it. And Miss Lovett's like, oh, he'll be here. Don't worry. Don't worry about it. But actually, who comes in is Mr. Pirelli and Toby. Mr. Pirelli's like, hi, um, may I please speak to Mr. Todd alone? And Miss Lovett's like, okay, sure. So she takes Toby down to the pie shop, gives him some pie, falls in love with him. Not like in love with him, but like, oh, he's such a cute little guy. I love him so much. And Mr. Pirelli is like, I'm going to need my money back. And I'm also going to need all of your money for the rest of your life. Because if you don't give it to me, I'm going to expose you, Benjamin Barker. And Sweeney's like, oh my god, how did he know? And Mr. Pirelli's like, so do we have a deal? And Sweeney's like, no, nah, I don't think so. So he actually kills him, you know, as one does. He kills Mr. Pirelli and hides him in a chest. <laughs> That's the first step that Sweeney Todd. So cut back to Joanna and Anthony. Joanna has told Anthony that, um... Judge Turpin has proposed. She's like, she's like, oh, you're so gross. What am I going to do? Um, Anthony's like, I'm going to rescue you. I'm going to steal you away, and we are going to get married. She's like, that sounds good to me, buddy. But while this whole thing is happening, Judge is talking to Beetle and is like, I don't get it. Like, I proposed to her, and she was weirded out by that. I don't, I don't understand why she was confused or weirded out by that. And Beetle's like, hey, maybe it's because you need a shave. You know who's a good barber is, um... Sweeney Todd, that Sweeney Todd guy, you should go check him out. So, Judge goes all the way to Sweeney Todd's parlor. He walks in, he's like, hello, I'm in need of a shave for the women. And Sweeney's like, okay, please sit down. So he starts shaving him, and then Sweeney gets this close to killing Judge Tarpin. He's like, this close. And then Anthony busts in, he's like, oh my god, I'm gonna marry Joanna, I'm gonna marry her, we're gonna leave and run away. And and he notices Judge Turpin, he's like, Ehh. And the judge is like, what? How dare you? No. I'm going to hide Joanna away. You're never going to find her again. How dare you? And then he turns to Sweeney, he's like, and as for you, Sweeney, I'm never coming back here because you have horrible people in your life. And he storms off. And then Sweeney's like, Gah! And he screams at Antony. Antony runs away as one does. And Miss Lovett walks upstairs. She's like, oh my god, what happened? And Sweeney Todd sings the best song of all time called Epiphany. And he's like, I'm going to kill anyone that gets in my way. Is that just the judge and Beatle anymore? It's going to be everybody. And um, Miss Lovett's like, okay, that's great. That's great. But uh, what are we going to do with that, uh, that dead guy in your little chest thing? And he's like, oh, we can bury him. 
And Miss Lovett's like, yeah, or, or we could eat him. <laughs> we can make him into pie. You'll make him into pie? That'd be great. End of act one. They decide to eat, eat people for pies. Act two opens up. Miss Lovett's business is booming. Toby's her little, her little helper guy. She's like, oh, my life is great. But Antony has discovered that um, Joanna is in an asylum because that's where the judge decided to hide her. He's like, she's in an asylum. So he runs all the way to Sweeney. He's like, Sweeney, I need your help. I need your help saving Joanna. She's in an asylum. And Sweeney's like, I can help you. You know what they do is wig makers go to asylums to get their hair. So all you have to do is tell me her hair color and then I can shape you into a wig maker. And he's like, yeah, she's blonde. And Sweeney's like, I'm gonna need a little bit more than that. So he makes him into a wig maker. Um, and Antony leaves as a wig maker. So he goes all the, way, all the way to the asylum and they've decided that they're gonna bring, or he's gonna bring Joanna back to the barber shop to hide away before they can run away. So Sweeney's like, this is my time to get revenge. So he writes a letter to Judge Turpin. and he's like, hello, I just wanna let you know that that horrible Antony guy, he stole your daughter, but I saved her. All you have to do is come by my barber shop and I will give her to you. See there, smiley face. Uh, <laughs> he sends that letter to Beetle Bamford. And then Toby is sitting by Miss Lovett. He's like, you know, Miss Lovett, you're great. You're so kind to me. But there's, a, there's, somebody, I, there's somebody I don't really trust. I mean, I, I protect you from anyone, but uh, <clears throat> Sweeney Todd, <clears throat> there's some really bad people in your life, I think. And she's like, what are you talking about? What do you mean? So Toby sings, not while I'm around, and gets like overwhelmed. And Miss Lovett's like, oh my god, no, why don't you just go buy yourself something pretty? And she pulls out this coin purse, which she had actually stolen from Mr. Pirelli after Mr. Pirelli died. And Toby's like, oh my god, that's Mr. Pirelli's coin purse. And she's like, what? No, no, it's not. No, it's not. Mr. Mr. T, Mr. T got me that for my birthday. And she's like, I knew it. I knew Mr. Todd was a bad guy. He's horrible. What is he? I don't know what he's doing, but he's obviously a bad guy. And Miss Lovett's like, no, no, he's not. How about, how about I show you how we make the meat? Mm -hmm. So I'll take you down into the basement and I can show you how we grind the meat, make it. And you, that sounds good. And then Toby's like, oh, yeah. So they go into the basement and she brings him to the meat grinder. And he's like, so what you do is you have to put the meat through three times. Okay. All right. See you in a bit. Bye. And then she closes the door and she locks him in the basement by himself. And as soon as she locks him in the basement, Beetle Bamford comes by. He's like, hello, how you doing? Um, I've gotten some health complaints from your chimney because it smells like garbage. So I'm supposed to inspect that. That is my job. So I need to go into your basement. And she's like, mm, how, about, how about we wait for Mr. Todd to get home? And you know, Mr. Todd would love to give you a shave for free. And <laughs> Beetle Bamford's like, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. So Sweeney Todd comes in and she's like, hi, Sweeney. Uh, Beetle Bamford's here to be a, to do a health inspection, but first, you should give him a shave. Sweeney's like, I'll do that, I'll do that. So he goes upstairs, kills Beetle. And I forgot to mention, at the beginning of Act 2, he's like, he had a normal barber chair, but he, like, fixed it up, like, souped it up, and made it into a mechanical one. So, um, now whenever he kills people, he can just pull a lever, and then the chair will tilt back, and the, the dead body will fall down a chute into the basement. So... He kills Beetle and sends him down the chute. And that whole time, um, Toby is grinding the meat, and he's like, oh, that's interesting. There's a, there's a fingernail in this meat that's, that's, odd. that's odd. So he keeps grinding it, and he's like, oh, my God, there's a whole finger in this meat. Oh, my God, we are eating humans. And as soon as he makes that like discovery, Beetle Bamford falls from the sky. <laughs> and Toby's like, God, loses his mind, as one would from seeing it dead man fall from the sky and um after after beetle dies sweeney todd leaves the barbershop and antony has rescued joanna so he hides her in the barbershop he's like mr todd will be back soon joanna's actually disguised as a man though because antony didn't want her to be found by judge turpin i think so he disguised her as a man so he's like here you go i'm gonna hide you so he hides her in the barbershop and then she hears the beggar woman coming so she hides in the she hides in the the trunk thing that the dead guy was in earlier in act one and the beggars looking around for um 
beetle. She's like, where the heck is he? Oh my god, everything smells like garbage. Kind of smells like human people, but that's weird. Um, and Sweeney Todd comes in. He's like, what are you doing here? And she's like, oh my god, there's fire. The city's on fire. Hey, you know, you look familiar. And just as this is happening, um, Judge Sharpen's walking up the stairs and he knocks on the door. And Sweeney's like, I don't have time. So he slits the beggar woman's throat and sends her down the chute. And then the judge comes in. He's like, hi, I heard you have my daughter. And he's like, yes, she'll be here soon. How about a shave? Do you want to shave? And Judge Sharpen's like, yeah. So they sit and then Sweeney Todd references a little about how he's actually Benjamin Barker. So he's like, hey, I want to let you know, I'm Benjamin Barker. So Judge Turpin is like, what? So he kills Judge Turpin and uh, sends him down the chute. And Joanna thinks that Sweeney Todd is like gone. So she starts to like get out of the trunk, but then he turns and he sees her and he's like, hey there, kiddo, did you just see what happened? And she's like, yeah, but I won't tell anybody. I promise I won't tell anybody. And he's like, how about I give you a shave? You want a shave? So he's about to kill her. And then he hears a scream from Miss Lovett downstairs and he's like i'll be right back so he runs all the way to miss lovett joanna escapes and miss lovett is down in the basement and she's like hi and he's like why'd you scream she's like oh you know it was just the judge was a little bit alive still but i killed him also toby's gone and we need to find him and kill him because he also knows that we use people for pies now and so they're in the basement and he's looking at the dead bodies and then he sees the beggar woman he gets a little bit closer and miss lovett's like oh no, don't do that. No, she's gross. Get away from her. And he's like, no, she looks familiar. And then he's like, oh my god, that was my wife. I just killed my wife. Why didn't you tell me she was alive? And she's like, oh, it's just because I love you so much and I, I didn't want you to suffer. And he's like, hmm, yeah, thanks for that. Thank you. So they start dancing and he's like, I hate you. And he throws her into the fire. So Miss Lovett is now dead. And also like, a whole bunch of other characters. So he's weeping over the dead body of his wife that he killed. And um, Toby comes in because he's been hiding in the basement this whole time. And he sees Mr. Todd with his razor beside him cradling his dead wife. And he's like, I knew it. I knew he was a bad guy. So he walks over to Mr. Todd, picks up the razor. He's like, you know, you shouldn't kill people. And then he kills Sweeney. So Sweeney's now dead. The only living people are Antony, Joanna, and Toby. And it ends with Toby killing Sweeney Todd and everybody going insane. And that is the story of Sweeney Todd. Oh, okay. Awesome. I did it in 16 minutes and 47 seconds. That's not bad. So, I don't know. I hope this was semi-entertaining. Let me know what other shows you'd like me to summarize in less than 15 minutes. Um, thanks for watching.